Okay, in this tutorial, I've taken a quick test render of this uh, sword animation, and the topic of this tutorial is not actually in Carrera at all. It's in Project Dog Waffle Pro Howler. I'm using 9.2, but I know that these tools are also available in 8.2 which is where I, I first started using these. So this will give you a, uh, an idea of how to, to uh, add motion trails. Motion blur is actually an effect that is automatically added when you're using a... when you, when you film something out of a, a camera, you, you automatically get motion blur. It's uh, the fact that no image is entirely crisp but when you actually watch it as a as an animation it becomes crisp when all of the blurs are added together so a motion trail is not the same as a motion blur even though you can use motion blur effect to create a trail because natural motion blur will cause a trail if it, if the animation is fast enough this animation if you play it back is pretty slow mo but so, so it'll work good in this tutorial because if you let Carrera run a, commotion, uh, a motion blur on your render and it's in slow mo, if it's moving too slowly, you're not going to get that motion trail that you want. However, you can use this wonderful tool Howler to add the motion blur and many other things using this tutorial on how to use the rotoscoping tools you'll also see how you can use this tool to correct little things that you might want to fix in an otherwise keepable animation clip you know instead of just throwing it away you can you can fix a little, a little blink here or there but anyway let's get on with this tutorial so we're starting here and we have this initial bit of animation going on and we don't need to add any any motion trailing to that at all that's not important where we want to add the motion trail is that that sweep right there even if we're in slow motion we want that to be accentuated yeah see look at his face yeah you know that's what we want here he's just okay and then yeah. see the difference okay so what we want to do is track the sword and apply an effect to it after it we want to tr apply an effect that follows it okay so let's go to somewhere right around here okay and when you first fire up this uh, curve tool it starts off like this you're in the add points mode and you do not have a closed curve and you are not making a sharp cornered polygon so let's start there you see that I'm, I'm not at the beginning of the timeline but I want to track this sword and this is where I am finding most of the sword that I want to add that trail to okay over here if I start at the very beginning I'm looking at the wrong side of the sword I don't want to look at the wrong side of the sword I want to see and right there is about most of the sword and I want to catch the center of the blade I want this handle and then I want the shape of the the effect okay the effect that we're going to apply so now I'm going to make it a closed curve and I could just leave it like that or I can make it into a polygon like that because we're going to soften it and I think this is going to give us a little bit more predictable results in this particular situation but like if you're actually selecting this guy and you want to either select everything other than him or just select him and just apply effects to him and all across the animation then you're gonna want the smoothing on okay but uh, for this purpose I'm going to turn that off and now I'm going to apply a 
a keyframe to this right in the frame that it's at now what that has done if we look off to the left up in the upper left of the interface where my cursor is you can see that add new points is now grayed out and this stuff we can no longer change because we we have a tracking animation and it's not going to track anything if we go adding points in the middle so it's just disabling those features for us we can't we can't do that we can change this we can change our minds on that part and we can move these things around but we can no longer add new points now when you're tracking these points you want to make sure that you keep them straight you know you don't want to start dragging this one to the wrong side and, and uh, flipping them around so you want to be careful and and watch what happens these changes right now if I don't click create keyframe it's it's not going to keep any of these changes it's as soon as I come back there it is and also finding your keyframes isn't quite as easy as in Carrera by just seeing the keyframe in the timeline but uh, it is just as easy because you you know about where it is as far as looking at the animation and then you'll see the word keyframe show up in the center of the loop okay this is your tools your roto tools you have create keyframe delete keyframe clear keyframes use cursors and, and we'll we'll get into this stuff as we go so whenever you create a keyframe at the beginning of the animation it automatically adds a keyframe at the end of the animation since we added a keyframe in the middle of the animation it has created a keyframe both at the beginning and at the end of the animation so let's start at the beginning before we get to the beginning I want to get to this part right here because here the sword is actually flipped okay see how it flips around and here from this point forward we're seeing the other side of the sword and so here is where I really want to track it this is just part of the shape this is part of the shape let's take all of the ones that are in the shape and keep them in order we want them top bottom left right still in order but this is the tip of the blade the center this is the uh, tip of the blade in the handle and this is the end of the guard now that we get this this squared away now we can come in and bring our shape smaller I don't, I'm actually probably not even going to apply any blur yet at this point but I do want the sh to track the shape and I really want to track this this sword so now what I need to do is create a keyframe there and when I go to this beginning I just want I want to see what happens if I delete this keyframe and then move forward and back okay good that's what I want because now when I get to this keyframe I know that before this I'm not going to apply any blur okay so any 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 keyframing of this curve earlier than that point is is just redundant I could do that if I wanted to but um, uh, it, it can be difficult because it's going to involve flipping the shape around but really f f I'm not even going to start the blur until somewhere in here you know this is where I really want that the trail not the blur the, the trail and so the same thing is at the end of the animation we have a keyframe that's tied to this keyframe and so we have to stop that from happening we have to change that keyframe so like like I did at the beginning I want to change this let's go to the center of the blade here center of the blade guesstimating here and bring this effect to more of a nil
there again. If I want to change this particular keyframe, I can. But what I really want to do at this point is to help make the end of the keyframe, the, the animation, where it belongs. So why don't we just bring these all down? Okay, now <clears throat> these ones that are below here, I believe, are going to actually end up at the bottom here. So to keep them all from getting too commingled, I'm going to keep these just above so that they're easy to grab should I need to come back and change this particular keyframe. Okay, so now I'm going to create a keyframe here and go to the end and I'm going to delete this keyframe. So now when I back off of that and I come back, now I can go ahead and create a keyframe. And I have to remember to come back here. Oh my, I forgot to uh, create a keyframe up here. So what I'll do right now is I'll delete this keyframe, come to make sure I log into this keyframe. Now I'll come back in here and I'll create a keyframe here. There we go. Now we have that keyframe for the start and we have that keyframe for the end and we can see that this is a bit off so I'm going but but it's it's so much better because right now we don't want any effect here. So I'm just gonna drag all of this stuff off to the edge so that I can bring you know by then you know, I'm going to have the effect off anyway, but I do like to track everything as it goes. So there we have that. I'm just going to create a keyframe now, and now I can come back and change that la that keyframe that I made before if I if I so choose. But let's see how it tracks. Not too shab. So I think I'm going to keep that keyframe the way it is for now, anyway and right here I want to make sure that I catch the middle catch the middle catch the edge and have this shape going the way I want the shape to go and create a keyframe you can see what I'm doing here why that is jumped like that I'm not quite sure but we'll just uh, it must have something to do with this uh, cat mole here you can you can change it between a cat mole and a bee spline I'm not quite sure if that's the rotoscoping interpolation or or if that's the the curve that it would be using but either way it's it's really easy to to fix tracking in discrepancies, all you have to do is uh, go to the problem spot and fix it. Okay, before I get much further, I want to take a look. Well, first, before I before I do anything, I want to make sure that I uh, track the sword properly. But um, what I was going to say is, I do want to. Uh, make sure that I keyframe in how I how I want this shape to be affected throughout the the course of the action. So here's where's that final keyframe right there, and then if I come to this first one that I have right here. Well, I know it's somewhere in there. So what I need to do is to come. It's gonna it's gonna need more than one. So why don't I, why don't I just come here instead of just explaining everything? I'll just quickly move stuff around since I already explained what I'm doing. You guys know what's going on, right? You certainly will. Um, you know the first time that you start. You know once you start playing with this because it's it's really powerful and it's really fun and it's really effective and most of all though it's really fast the more the more um, 
you end up doing this you know less talking <laughs> more doing less talking you'll see that the it it really gets fast you know especially if you're on a deadline you you really are, are on a rush and you have to get stuff done you know uh, to please the clients or to please yourself or you know say you've got a trip coming up and you you really want to get this thing launched up to YouTube and um, you know what I'm saying just don't talk just go in and and do it and if it's not working out right redo it and like I say you know if it if if these these uh, interpolation problems get too much and, and you got stuff flipping around and you start to get confused and you get a headache out over it uh, don't perpetuate the headache come in here and start over with a new curve or if you're happy with the curve but you're not happy with your keyframes come in here and clear keyframes I kept accidentally hitting that button so I'm redoing this this video again <laughs> okay can see here okay now now I'm almost tracking the sword there's a little bit in here let's uh, let's see if there's a biggest part of the problem one thing I like to do is if there's a problem I like to find the biggest part okay there's a keyframe there's a nice it's it's evening out so I know there's a keyframe coming and I know that right here it's really between these two frames it's um, that's where it's the most messed up and so I'll probably have to change one and then change the other because of the the big change in there I used um, uh, 18 frames per second to make this render faster um, you know because this is just a, a quick tutorial so, you know, I didn't want to spend too much time on it. Okay, so now I should have some pretty decent tracking of the sword. And the thing is, is I want to explain right away that this is going to be a blurred selection in addition to the blurring that we're actually going to add to the image. But the selection itself, this little red line is going to become our selection. I'm I'm going to blur that selection so I I just want you to know that ahead of time so that you know that you know the this actual little shape that we're making here we want it to track nicely but as far as the shape itself it does not have to be at all perfect uh sometimes we have enough time and we know that we can so that so it just becomes a thing where we're happy to make it perfect and we're human we we like that kind of thing so there's nothing wrong with doing that go ahead and make it perfect if you want but I just like you to know that you can get some really good effects really quickly without having to be perfect and you'll see why in a second but the the, the better you get it the better the effect will be so if you are doing it for a client go ahead and, and take the extra few seconds really to uh, shoot for something a little better and whenever you when also whenever you add a keyframe you're not just affecting what happens after it you're also affecting what happens before so always make sure to check it in in both directions and uh, and there that that's what I want to track I, I know that I'm not even having the effect on that side of the sword so I'm not even paying attention to that right now and there we go and see that this is the shape and I, and I want it to grow and then dissipate and that's that's pretty much what I want it to do not sure if I want it to grow any larger than that but just so you know what you can do if you want 
is come into any of these keyframes in here. See, it took so many little keyframes to to track the the differences. That's the other thing too, is if you shoot at um, 30 or 60 frames per second, you're going to find it a lot easier to track, a lot longer to render. Um, so there's the trade-offs, okay? But like say here, we want this to grow more. You know, we still want to have a really, we're still, we're not going to change the tracking of the sword. We're just going to change the tracking of the of the shape, and I don't want to. I'm just showing you what you can do, you know. And try and do it on a keyframe, because that'll that'll make your work less. Then you know that that you just have to check it between the next keyframe and see. Because I didn't come to create keyframe on top of that keyframe, it's not. It didn't save those changes that I made, and. Right here, if we want to see, you can see how right here it's going off of this this sword handle right here. But that's you know for for what I'm doing right now, that's actually going to be fine. But from that keyframe to that keyframe, well, might it, I'm just going to go ahead and fix it. Why not? We're tracking stuff. We might as well track it correctly, right? I'll leave a little bit of blur in there and create a keyframe. Now that I've <clears throat> babbled your ear off, why don't I? Follow this down, create another keyframe, check and see what happens. Good. By then I'm going to have the, the blurring effect shut off. So now what we now that we went through that, I'm not going to go any further with that. If you want to go ahead for the sake of this tutorial, bam. Let's just consider the animated roto tooling done. If we want, and we probably should, let's come into roto tools and um, save your your curve tool. Okay, I'm gonna save it right in the same spot where I saved this particular render, and we'll go sword trail. Save as type roto, and we'll save that. Roto saved. Okay, now all that saved is this animated uh, roto tracking that we did. So if something goofy should happen, if I accidentally clear frames and stuff, I can open this. Oops, that's not gonna. As long as I don't save anything, it's not gonna. You know, as long as I don't come up and, you know, if you accidentally go like that. Uh, it's not going to save it unless you actually come in and create the keyframe. Okay, that's really nice. So anyway, now that we have this uh, Roto selection, what do we do? Well, we come into Roto Tools, and we're going to, first of all, use the curve as alpha, and we see the marching ants now. And we don't want that to be a discrete line. For normal images, you you come into selection and Gaussian blur or box blur the alpha to blend between what is selected and isn't selected. And what it does is it instead of here, you know, this would be an easier way to show it. Let's go selection. Uh, store alpha and here you can see that it's white and black well if you Gaussian blur the alpha there will be a, a grayscale transitioning calculated in between here and you can use box blur or Gaussian, Gaussian blur to create that 
I want I, I I don't want to just Gaussian blur the selection for this frame though. I want to do it across the whole animation. So I'm going to Gaussian blur and why don't we just keep it at eight? That's looks like a nice amount. Um, okay, so now I'm Gaussian blurring my my selection. Okay, now I'm going to come into timeline. And okay, I, I should explain here that uh, normal howler behavior is this timeline is on the top. I, working in Carrera all the time, I'm so used to the timeline being at the bottom. So I just I just uh, switched the layout. There's, uh, the howler is fantastic on how you can uh, switch things around. You know, and um, change around your interface. So your your timeline is probably up on top. I, I changed that. So now here we have the timeline editor and what I need to do is apply a blur, right? So let's come to some place where it's really aggressive looking and let's come in here and look at our blur selections. Now we can have a simple blur, Gaussian blur, motion blur, zoom blur, mystic vision or dark vision. Mystic vision is the same as dark vision with the exception that mystic vision casts the lighter pixels across a spread. Uh, let's see if we can show it off here. See? See what it's doing to the image in here? It's um, you're, you're using this little center point to determine how much effect is created. And now we can change that by, by increasing the factor here. And um, I'd say right in here is where we really want a lot of effect, a good amount of it. And I'm going to bring the quality way up too. But instead of using these center X and Y, it's so much easier to just use use this in here. And that way you can you can you can set your direction. And that direction indicator is also changeable in the timeline. Now you can't just select out here and expect it to change, even if that's where you've dragged it to. You always have to start inside the window somewhere. And so use that the and, and be a little picky you know you want it to turn out nice and you know set set what you want your effect to be and create a timeline uh, a keyframe sorry now we'll come back here and right now I'm not gonna even mess with the the placement of it I'm just going to crank the factor to zero and produce a timeline and now I'm gonna leave the whole beginning of the animation like that and why not right here why don't I change the direction so it starts off sweeping like this okay and I can even increase that a little bit more and then and then I can actually increase the factor right away um, if you crank it up too much you, you see what's happening is it you're, you're creating a bit of a smear here and you, you might like that actually um, but at the beginning here I'm gonna go for that doubling effect like that okay set my keyframe And when you're dragging around in this timeline, make sure that you're not selecting a keyframe because you can you can select those keyframes and drag them around. And now, right here, I think I I want to change the direction to this, and something like that. Okay, and then I want to increase the factor. Let's go ahead and increase it all the way at this point. No. Go right in there. Add a keyframe. 
and then here we'll crank the factor all the way up no we'll go to zero create a keyframe and here we'll have the factor all the way up and create the keyframe okay and we don't really need any more motion blurring so when you're all done go ahead and and keep uh, you can only save one level of undo in the uh, with the timeline editor and with the timeline editor you can do a lot more than just these blurs you can um, use uh, photographic effects um, which which are really quite powerful um, change your, your sharpening and it's really amazing what can happen when you change your sharpening and your blurs throughout an animation but um, you can save these undos but it's only one level once you once you go and add another animated filter um, you're you're creating a whole new set of undos and so your previous timeline filter so you want to look at it when you're done but let's just I just want to quick show you this so you know that um, you know Howler is worth so much more than than the price of it um, just having all of this that you can apply and what's really fun is you can oilify uh, you can add wet paint you can add paper um, video effects uh, combined with swap is huge um, what your swap image is 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 um, yeah, that's another tutorial altogether but uh, there's these animated all of these different filters that you can add and this is this all comes with Howler I have some extra uh, plugins that that come with the um, create the cool creative bundle uh, in particular the any effects anyway I'll quit babbling we've applied mystic vision I just wanted to make the point that um, you know this stuff is really really intense and um, uh, very very much worth the investment I, I absolutely love this software um, you can change the interpolation of your your spline um, well this is spline interpolation you can change it I'm, I'm gonna leave everything the way it is and I'm gonna apply it while saving my undos in here you're not gonna see the effect being applied um, it's just running through and it's applying in here you can actually see it though it's a small preview but y you can actually see it but now you can you can actually close out of this and if you don't like it just click back on the timeline editor and hit undo if you don't like it but so now let's let's um, um, let's go to selection show marching ants and that'll dis disable the marching ants and then so that we're not seeing that tool all we have to do is select a different tool and it's still there um, it just doesn't show up if you're not if you don't have it selected so now we can see our animation let's go back to the beginning and run it bam that's what I'm talking about like I say after doing so you might decide that that's that's too small of a shape you might want to spread that shape out a little bit more or actually use less of a factor on there